So live demo, I'll change my um, screen sharing here to my browser and show you how migration might look like. So this is a very, very small Jira environment um, and it has a couple of projects and one of the projects, let's say that um, we need to migrate today because it's very, very important is the Jira Con 21 project. This project is very, very important. It has a lot of users, I guess only six so far, and it has a lot of tickets so far only three. And the goal now is to migrate this setup to the cloud. So how to do that? Um, our strategy here, we will not, we would not want to migrate everything to the cloud first. And second, I have already a cloud environment and I have some couple of projects there. Notice that the project that we would like to migrate is not existing there yet. So we cannot use site export import in any way demoing site import export takes really a lot of time. So in this case, it fits perfectly to use the Jira Cloud Migration Assistant. So as I said, the first thing to make sure that you have access to everything in the system. And what I always do, like I just go to, yeah, search issues. I see the result here that's being shown. And then, um, yeah, 727 ticket. And then I go to system information and just check the database statistics under system info. And here I can directly compare if I have access to all the tickets, in this case, 727 ticket. And in most of the cases, I don't have like access to all the tickets. So I have to negotiate with my customer to get the access to everything. It's really very interesting as well to analyze database statistics and take a look at that. And um, that was the first point. The other point is about the apps that I use. So when I go to manage apps, I use this app, Home Directory Browser from Votas. I really like it because most of the customers, they don't like grant us SSH access to the server uh, due to security relevant like um, agreements. And um, to be able to export the, 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 the site import or the site backup, this app helps us like directly to do that. So I run site backup and I go to export and I find the data there and I can just download it. As well, I use the app for um, running SQL like requests to verify certain things. Um, the app is really worth it. So instead of struggling a lot, sending emails, sending requests to the administrator, he's running it, giving you answers back. Instead of doing that, you can just um, use this app. And for analyzing workflows, which is really a very hard task without any automation there, you can run, write your own script. That will be one way. Or the other way would be to install the um, admin toolbox from Decades. And this app analyzes all the workflow or the workflows, shows you here if there are scripts, any other third party apps, uh, post functions, validators, and so on. And you can quickly filter as well as well the active workflows and split everything here and then take that as a documentation. And after the migration, make sure that you change all these configurations manually or at least check them. So to migrate to the cloud, you need the very, very um, important app from Atlassian, uh, which is called Jira Cloud Migration Assistant. Notice that we are trying here to migrate Jira for Confluence is basically the same. You install the Jira Cloud Migration Assistant. Make sure always that it's updated uh, because there's a check that you cannot run a migration with an, an out, with an outdated version here. So when the app is there, just go to system and then migrate to the cloud. I guess I need more RAM for the server. <laughs> or I guess my server is down. <laughs> okay, let's go back to system, now it's working. And then we go to migrate to cloud. 
So there are there is one step here that we can do with the customer on the first step is go to this um, page and just analyze the different apps, say what apps do we need to migrate, what apps can we just leave behind, write some comments. Of course, the result can just be copied to Confluence or downloaded as CSV and saved somewhere. With this phase, you can as well in the next phase, connect to the cloud and install all the needed apps. Today, we'll not be migrating or installing any apps. We will go to migrate or manage your migration and we will create another plan. The next step would be to connect to the cloud. We will call this JiraCon migration. And if you don't have anything visible here, just select choose cloud site. You will have a list of all the available cloud sites where you are as a, an organization admin there. You can select the target site. In this case, I already did that step. Choose what to migrate. Here, we did not activate the app migration hidden feature. So we have only two parts. Which project do we want to migrate? In this case, we would like to migrate my Jurecon project. The app is very, very, really helpful. You see how big is the data and um, the estimation time of the migration, because during that time, the users cannot use the project or should not use the project. So you can communicate that downtime to your users. Add that, add that to migration. And next step would be to migrate users. I always select, of course, all users and I preserve group membership. That means if I have a user A in a group B, on the server, he will be migrating the cloud as user A in that group P to have access, uh, B to have access to all the projects that I have. Add that to migration. The next step would be to check the errors. If you have users with invalid email address or with duplicate email address, you will have that here. And you can then talk with the customer or with the Active Directory administrator and try to clean those users up. You will always have like this warning about duplicate groups once you run one migration. But that's not really risky. That's not so bad because this group has been already created in the cloud on my first migration, for instance. And now we are just updating the group membership. So that is safe to see this warning here. And um, if the project was already migrated once, then you cannot re-migrate it again. Like you cannot push new data to the cloud. So when you migrate the project, make sure to close that project on the server, make it invisible or at least read only to make sure that no new data will be generated. And of course, if that project is public or has public access like settings, then you will have the warning here. So let's review the migration and just run it. Here we can go to view details and see the steps. Basically what the app now will do step by step it will go through the users that I've selected. It will go through the groups that are affected with this migration and it will just migrate them. Notice here that it will run very fast because I already did that step. So there will be no creation in the cloud of new users. That runs very fast. And now the cloud migration assistant will just go through the project and checks what are the configurations that can be migrated and will then create the project in the cloud of course, migrate the workflow, the different settings, the custom fields, so the configuration first, and then migrate the data, so the tickets that we created, and of course, match the, the, the users to those tickets. And in the last step, it will migrate the attachments. So with the Cloud Migration Assistant, you get a lot of information already migrated to the cloud. Yeah, that has been done successfully. We can go to the cloud or we can click here, then we'll go to the cloud. But what I can do as well, I just go to the cloud, refresh my page and expect to see the project here. The icon has been migrated, the project lead, the same key, of course, of the project. And um, of course, my board with the tickets that I've created on the server.